Hello, this is Your Evil Twin, welcoming you back to Let's Play Quantum Break. Thank you to everyone that voted to decide the outcome of the game's first junction point. And thanks for all the posts and comments, there have been some great discussions. We can't risk any unwanted attention. Convince the witnesses not to talk, keep eyes on them and send them home. Initialize a PR campaign. We need the city on our side. Not this one. She's the head of the anti-monarch movement. I think we're looking at the new face of our campaign. Jack! There's no other way out. We're going through the machine. Oh, wait, no! Jack! This way! Jack! I use my power to guide us. To decide how to best prepare for the inevitable end of time. That gives the chosen few a chance to survive. I've seen the end of time. We just got the achievement, the soft touch, for choosing the PR approach. Out of 128 votes, 98 of you voted for PR and 30 voted for Hardline. That's 76% PR, which almost exactly matches the general community feeling. We can see here that on Steam, 75% of players agreed with that choice. In fact, I chose PR for my first playthrough. We can also see that on my Steam friends list, 50% of players chose Hardline. So apparently half of my Steam friends are absolute monsters. <laughs> Just kidding, there's plenty of good reasons to choose Hardline, and I'm looking forward to showing off the Hardline timeline in bonus videos. On the Xbox One and Windows Store version, I think 65% of players chose PR, but I think a greater proportion of Xbox players have replayed the game and chosen differently on their second playthrough, so that skews the figure slightly. Now let's watch the first episode of the Quantum Break live action show and see that junction impact in action. Episode 1, Monarch Solutions. Time's up. The one in the middle, I assume that's your mother. On the left, of course, your father. And on the right, the little one. How old is she? One fourteen Lafayette. Is that correct? That was taken not five minutes ago by my associate, Michael. What do you want? I want a statement. And you don't want Michael outside of your house a moment longer. What happens to me? Well, that's entirely up to you. I'm so glad we could work this out.
Liam. Walk with me. Seems your work's been undone. We just lost communication with Jack Joyce's transport. How the fuck does that happen? Knowing how isn't important, you just need to find him. Wincott is working on a location. Great. What is it? What? Something's wrong. University. That's not how we operate. It was sloppy. Have all your operations gone smoothly? Go home, Liam. Wait for the call. I'm sure your wife misses you. Good thing about our friend Stan is Stan makes it easy. See, the guy goes around using the same username and password everywhere he goes. Now, <laughs> that means that his cloud isn't so protected. May I present to you Exhibit A. <laughs> wow, God, this guy's swinging for the fences. And what is that? What are you doing, Brenner? Coffee cup. No, I know it's a coffee cup, but what is it doing on my table? The fuck? You know what this is? Do they have these in Idaho? Iowa. Whatever. Use it. You tell me what's next, Brenner? Uh, I don't know. I know you don't know. And that makes me sad for you. All we do now is upload our girl's video to Stan and our friends at WZWY, send Stan a note with some of his private pics, and last but not least, we post the letter. That letter allows Reclaim to take full responsibility for everything that's happening. Signed sincerely, your local terrorist, Jack Joyce. You can say it. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Shit. Mr. Hatch, perfect timing. Me and Brenner, we just dug up some major dirt on uh, <laughs> on our news director over at WZWY. He'll be uh, he'll be running our copy and posting that girl's video within an hour. Good work, Woodcock. Where are we with Joyce? Joyce? Uh, well, I. I got a lock on his transpo. I mean, I've hacked into his camera. I'm, I'm waiting to find a locale. It's not, it's not, it's not incredibly easy. Keep an eye on it. And when you find him, contact Burke directly. I think we have a traitor in our midst. Traitor? What's it? Hello? Hello, man. But I'll let you go, Mr. Hatch. Thank you. Was that Martin Hatch? Get the fuck out of my office. Get the fuck out of my office. Things have been really bad at work. I'm sorry. I just... I dreamt you were a cat. A cat? Mm-hmm. <laughs> With these big furry bear paws. Way too big for your body. It was a strange creature. But I knew it was you. I have to get back to work soon. 
You work more than any field manager in the history of field managers. <sighs> Baby, you haven't been home in two days. Your mom's being difficult. Oh, I'm, I'm, she is, I'm she's being, being difficult, huh? She's being very difficult. <laughs> what happened? Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think that's the baby. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay, you would. <laughs> It's okay, go. Yeah. Berg, you got a lead on Joyce. What is it? I was able to track his transport to a warehouse on Burgundy and Wilkins. It's inside ground zero perimeter. Sending you the coordinates now. in order to rebuild this great city, transforming it into an economic powerhouse over the past research and design. And with Monarch's greatest investment in the future being right here in Riverport, it's pretty clear how bright the future is for all of us. Paul, there's been a development. Jack, you've already seen it. Tonight on the island, he'll be there and he'll want revenge. I need him stopped now. I think our focus may be somewhat misguided here. Your fifth calm traitor? You shouldn't take it so lightly. Joyce got lucky. He escaped. He's gone. He wouldn't be foolish enough to come back. Our only vulnerability is within, Paul. You should see that. Telling me what I've already seen. You're not thinking clearly. You need your treatment. You've been the face of Monarch for all these years, Martin. But let's get clear on something. This is still my ship. And I simply don't want to see you go down with it. Just find him. We take you now to Riverport University, where a violent showdown shook the town last night. Joining us now is Amy Ferraro, an eyewitness on the scene. Amy, tell us, what is going on here? There were people from our group who took things too far. Things got very violent. And that violence was because of Jack 
Joyce. I want people to know that he is a very dangerous person, a terrorist. Two bacon and egg sandwiches? Oh, Sounds like a terrifying thanks. thing down there. We really appreciate your bravery going on record to speak out against what appears to be such a dangerous person. I was over in the lab at the university this morning. Someone saw the equation. Huh? I've just received yeah. word that Monarch security forces have teamed up with local police to hopefully expedite the search for Jack Joyce and keep the people of Riverport safe as this very unsettling story continues to unfold. What's up, IT? And you wish I was IT. Hey, you don't have security clearance being here. Security clearance? Access granted. I thought you might have been up all night, so... You didn't get the runny kind, did you? No, it shouldn't be. It's cool, they're new. Oh, man. Fiona Miller. Terminated. You're fired. So what the, what's the 411? What the hell's going on out there? <laughs> the 411. Yeah, the 411. <laughs> Uh, everything's, everything's fine. Everything's fine? Everything's fine. There was a shootout at the university last night. Nothing I couldn't handle. All right. You think they're gonna cancel the party tonight? Are you kidding? No way. Hatch knows what he's doing. You gonna go? To a party? Me? Go to a party. Uh, we can roll together if you want. Okay. Yeah, all right, I'll, I'll go. Okay, buddy. What are you gonna wear? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll go naked. Nice, I like that. Um, I gotta get back to my desk, so. See you tonight? Yeah. I'll see you tonight. Yep. Buddy. And this isn't what it looks like. Fuck, Beth. I really didn't want it to be you. You need to listen to me. Step away from the van. Step away! Right now! Drop the gun. I can't do that. You have three seconds till I pull. I have better reflexes. Then you're a marksman for shit. No. No! He's gone. Do you see what's happening? The stutters. More and more. Beth, Beth, what is, what is going on? Time is breaking down. The end is coming, and Joyce could be the key. Wait, 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 wait the, the, the end, the end of what? Beth, the end of what, the of end time, of what? Of time, of time, of life as we know it, the entire universe, gone. And somehow, Monarch has been preparing for it. They knew it was coming. There's this thing. It's called a lifeboat protocol, and it can save us, at least some of us. Put your hands on your head, down on your knees. Brown. Wilder, do not make me ask again. Oh. Joyce just took down half my men. You think maybe he had some help? We're unarmed. I was responding to I did not give call. a fuck. Hey, I am with Monarch. On your knees! If they take me in, then it's the end for me. And for you. Down! I'm just do what he says. Do not let them take us. We'll never find the lifeboat. Think about Emily. Just relax. Leo! Shut up! This 
lifeboat protocol. What is it? I don't know. But Dr. Kim was at the center of it. Dr. Kim? If you can get into his lab. That's impossible. It's been closed up since he disappeared. Do you know anyone who could get you in? Charlie, I need a favor. Yeah. Okay, um, could we talk somewhere private? Uh, I'd really rather not. Let's in your office would be good. It'll be really quick. Yeah. So what happened with Joyce? Oh, there was nothing there. Huh? There's nothing there? He, like he just wasn't there? Like, or what? No, Hatch. He um, he reassigned me. He wants me to. Secure the perimeter lab on the island. He thinks Joyce might go there. He sent me here to get access to it. Can you help me out? Yeah, sure. Let me uh, let me see what I can do. Thank you. You know, it's really funny that you say that uh, that lead on Joyce was no good because I don't know. Uh, it sure looks like he was there. And that other guy kind of looks like you, but that's weird because you work for Monarch, and that guy clearly, <laughs> clearly does not work for Monarch. Now, I can zoom in. Hey, hey, wait, stop killing me! Because I just put a high security alert out on your ass. You got about 20 seconds. You're bluffing. Hey, you're welcome to stick around and try to find out. You know what I'm going to do to you. I have a pretty good idea what Monarch's going to do to you. In about 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, Ten. Good luck, buddy. Nine. Eight. We need all points converged on Liam Burke. He's armed and dangerous. Listen up, he's on level B near the main overpass. Just a reminder, you want our employees. Get your flu shot. We are free of charge. Get him in HR. I repeat, south parking structure, fourth floor.
Okay, he's heading south on Eastman, south on Eastman. <laughs> He's headed to you. He's flying. Look out. Copy. Cut him off. Cut. Go. Come on. You got this. And there we have it, the end of episode one. It's worth noting that Beth Wilder turning Liam Burke against Monarch, and then Liam getting arrested, happens in both timelines. That's one plot element that doesn't change depending on whether you choose PR or Hardline. There's no way that Remedy would make an expensive car chase be a piece of optional content that half of players might miss. Now, if you were paying attention, you might have noticed an animated icon appear in the top right of the screen a couple of times. That's the quantum ripple symbol. That means those were extra scenes that we unlocked by interacting with certain objects in the previous act. The first was when we were playing as Jack, and we examined an equation on a whiteboard in the university lab. And Jack commented on how Paul was sure that the figures were correct and the experiment would work. That caused Will to make some corrections to the equation. Speak out against what appears to be such a dangerous person. I was over in the lab at the university this morning. Someone solved the equation. Huh? I've just received yeah. word that Monarch security forces have teamed up with local police to hopefully expedite the search for Jack Joyce and keep the people of Riverport safe as this very unsettling story continues to unfold. The second Quantum Ripple event was when we were playing as Paul, and we examined the old Ram statuette and ordered for it to be transferred to his office at Monarch HQ. That led to this scene, in which Monarch employees are taking photos with it. Now, some of you might remember that in an earlier part, I mentioned that Monarch's security forces drive around in armoured personnel carriers known as Bearcats, named after a climbing mammal found in Southeast Asia. That might shed a bit of light on Emily's curious dream. I dreamt you were a cat. A cat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> These big furry bear paws. Way too big for your body. It was a strange creature. But I knew it was you. I don't think the name Bearcat is used in the actual game, but the Monarch vehicles do get called Bearcats in the Quantum Break novel, Zero State. So while most people probably reckon that Emily's dream seems a bit random, I'm pretty sure that it's an easter egg, a reference to the APCs used by Monarch Security. Perhaps Emily overheard a phone conversation in which Liam mentioned a bear cat, and that little detail stuck in her subconscious. Plus there's the fact that Liam is leading a double life. He is part one thing, part another. As Emily put it, he is a strange creature. Talking of easter eggs, there's a book by Alan Wake lying next to Liam and Emily's TV. It's The Sudden Stop. Alan Wake's final Alex Casey detective novel. 
There's also a couple of small oddities that may or may not be continuity errors between the live-action show and the game. The first is when a Monarch security officer whispers something in Martin Hatch's ear, and then a few moments later Hatch tells Liam about Jack Joyce's transport. Seems your work's been undone. We just lost communication with Jack Joyce's transport. How the fuck does that happen? Knowing how isn't important, you just need to find him. However, back when we were playing as Paul Serene in the Junction Point, Hatch already knew about the missing transport, and he told Paul about it. So there seems to be a bit of a discrepancy as to when Hatch got that bit of information. I suppose that guy could have been whispering in Hatch's ear about something completely different, and for some reason Hatch waited until Amy was dealt with before he told Liam about the transport, but uh, that seems doubtful. Another oddity is that there is a TV broadcast that refers to Martin Hatch as the CEO of Monarch Solutions, when in fact Paul is the CEO. Just last year, CEO Martin Hatch founded a technical institute right down the street from Monarch headquarters. Amy's Monarch timeline, at the university protest, said no one knows who's in charge of Monarch, which suggests that people know that Monarch keeps the identity of the CEO a secret. Martin Hatch is known as Monarch's spokesperson, and we'll find documents later that refer to him as the head of security, or the head of PR. But in the novel Zero State, which is based on an earlier version of the game story, Martin Hatch is actually the CEO of the company. In the novel, there's less than ten people at Monarch that know about Paul Serene, and when they talk about Paul, they refer to him as the consultant. That's certainly not the case in the final game, We've seen that plenty of Monarch troopers and technicians recognise Paul, and call him by name, and take orders from him. And in future parts, we will read internal Monarch emails and documents that refer to Paul as the CEO. So it could be that the TV broadcast within the live-action show was written using some out-of-date info. Or perhaps Monarch lies to the media, and tells them that Martin Hatch is the CEO. But within the upper ranks of the company, and the security forces, employees know that the CEO is really Paul Serene, and occasional leaks and mistakes mean that anti-monarch protesters like Amy are wise to the fact that Martin Hatch is just a figurehead, and he's not really the one in charge. That's it for this part of Let's Play Quantum Break. We've completed Act 1, the first junction point, and the first live-action episode, so we've now unlocked some optional content, including Quantum Ripple reports, and the audio diaries of Jack Joyce, Beth Wilder, and Paul Serene. So the next part will be an optional little bonus segment, where we shall read those rather amusing Quantum Ripple reports, and listen to those audio diaries. After that, we'll be returning to the gameplay in Act 2, perfect place to hide something. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join me next time.